This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. Please don't judge me if I loosen another button because it's getting hot out there, folks. And it's not just because it's summer, we're experiencing monumental, life-changing amounts of high temps. Data from the Environmental Protection Agency shows that heat waves are becoming more frequent in the US. In the 60s, we saw an average of two heat waves a year. During the 2010s, that went up to six per year. The National Weather Service predicts July, August, and September of this year will be hotter than normal. June has already set the stage for a scorcher. We saw a record-breaking heat wave in the Midwest and Southeast, impacting over 60 million Americans. I am burning up. It's 110 out here, and I'm too old to be sitting out here. It's not only happening in the US, we're seeing this across the world. Japan is experiencing the worst heat wave it's seen since 1875. Officials told residents to use less electricity and to ration air conditioning to help combat power shortages. In Europe, Rome tied its hottest temperature on record and several other cities hit records as well. So how can we help ease the effects of extreme heat as it's becoming something we deal with on the regular? You might not realize it, but heat waves can be shaped in part by things like urban planning and land use. Lad Keith co-wrote a report on different solutions that was published by the American Planning Association. He explained to us that designing cities to help combat heat is a fairly new concept. We did a literature review um, of research on extreme heat that found that 60% of the research on heat planning and heat governance processes have all been written within the last five years. Lad says these planning solutions fall into two categories, heat mitigation and heat management. On the heat mitigation front, the goal is to cool down cities. And if you live in a big one, you might have seen some of these efforts at work. Let's start with ventilation corridors. This design helps increase wind speed to cool an area. A study presented at the International Conference on Urban Climate found that ventilation corridors can increase the average wind speed during the summer by about six to nine percent, which can bring the temperature down a few degrees. Buildings can also be arranged in a certain pattern to help bring temperatures down. The different dimensions and amount of space between buildings can allow more air to flow through and cool things down a bit. In addition to that, shade structures could be added throughout communities. Take this dramatic one in Scottsdale, Arizona, for example. The EPA says shaded surfaces can be up to 45 degrees cooler. Greenery is a good method for cooling too. Let's look at Singapore. It started its Garden City plan in 1967 with intensive tree planting and adding new parks. As the city grew and the buildings were taller, they focused on creating sky gardens, adding greenery all over the buildings. Singapore has 240 acres of sky-rise greenery and it plans to double that by 2030. The thing is, for new buildings, adding a certain amount of greenery is a required policy to help them reach their goals. U.S. cities like D.C., New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago offer incentives for installing green roofs. Last year, a bill was introduced in the House by Representative Nydia Velasquez that would make the Department of Energy establish a grant program to build green roofs on public schools. Painting roofs and roads lighter colors can also help reflect more solar energy away from these cities. NASA research found that a white roof could be 42 degrees cooler than your normal black roof on the hottest day of the summer in New York City. Through New York's Cool Roofs Initiative, as of 2018, the city painted more than 5 million square feet of its roofs with a reflective coating. LA had a similar idea in mind. They implemented a pilot program where they painted their roads with white paint and it decreased the temperature by as much as 23 degrees. Those pilot projects, when they're evaluated, are incredibly helpful because they kind of point us in the right direction to understand where to put the public investment, the public money in the future, um, and how to really reduce the urban heat island effect. And so I think we're at the early days of seeing um, cities really taking seriously the, the need to mitigate heat in, um, in cities and towns. One study found that the combination of adding more green space and reflective materials could offset the projected increase of heat-related deaths in Philly, Atlanta, and Phoenix by 2050. Right now, heat is the number one weather-related killer in the US. We've seen different cities try out these heat mitigation efforts, but other cities are taking the heat management route. 
which is about preparing for and responding to extreme heat. In some communities like Miami-Dade County, Phoenix, um, Los Angeles, they've appointed a chief heat officer as the person or even an office to, um, to uh, coordinate those efforts. In a lot of the uh, United States, 19,000 cities and towns, there aren't the resources to have a full dedicated staff for just heat. And so even just coordinating efforts between uh, urban planners and public health professionals, emergency management professionals, and the local national National Weather Service office would be a great way to have communities kind of um, take the first step in truly addressing heat risk. Heat management involves things like educating the public on the dangers of heat, creating a heat action plan that includes setting up cooling centers and assistance programs to help make indoor cooling accessible for everyone. Formerly redlined neighborhoods or communities that have been disinvested in over time that are often lower income or minority population um, are often much hotter than their richer counterparts. And so that's something to consider too, is that as we strategize how to address heat risk in communities is making sure that we're focusing on the communities that are most at risk. Getting funding for these projects is still a work in progress, but planners say they hope to see a shift from using public investment to getting more funding from larger government agencies as heat continues to be a pressing issue.